One of the most common things that I get asked a bunch about when it comes to this YouTube channel is how I go about color grading my footage. And even though I have discussed this in the past, my workflow has somewhat changed over the past six months or so. And so today I wanted to walk you through how I take my images looking like this to looking like this. So the first piece of the puzzle before you do any editing whatsoever is to make sure that you shoot with the correct camera settings. And in particular, I'm referring to your white balance settings. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to do that today because everyone uses different cameras, but if you skip this step, then the color grading process will pretty much be useless or at the very least, it won't look good whatsoever. So the first step within Premiere, once I've got my project pretty much fully edited, is to add some sharpening. Now, this is a crucial step because Canon cameras actually shoot fairly soft images Images, and we definitely don't want the camera to be adding in body sharpening because it looks pretty low quality. So that's why I've decreased it in my uh, camera picture profile setup and I can add it in post-production and then control the level of sharpness, which generally handles it a lot better than the camera would in body. So there's a few ways to do this, but the way that I go about doing it is I come up to my effects tab over here. That's where I've got it set up to be, but you might have to come to window and then go to effects for it to show up. Then I come up to my search bar and I'm just gonna type in sharpen. And here's my effect. I'm gonna drag and drop that onto one of the clips that I am color grading. So I'm gonna click that there. I'm gonna to go to effect controls. And you can see at the moment, the sharpen amount is set to zero. I generally set my sharpen amount to at least 30. And often I'll actually punch it all the way up to 40. Now, some people will say that that is too much. I find that it works fairly well with the Canon images that I shoot, but you'll need to play around with this, turn it on and off to see the effect that it's doing to your image. Some people like to set their max at about 25, but for me, it's either 30, 35 or 40, give or take. If you do go too far with this effect though, it will end up looking pretty bad. And so just use some common sense, turn the effect on and off, like I said, and have a look at what works for the footage that you've shot. One thing that I also need to do here as part of the sharpening process is increase the scale of my clip just by a little amount. And you might be asking me, why on earth are you increasing the scale of your clip as part of the sharpening process? But the thing is, if you don't do it, what you'll find is that when you add sharpening in post-production, it adds this thin line around the border of your image. And I'll show a close up of it now so you can see what I'm talking about. But this can actually be quite distracting. Once you see it, if you're watching a YouTube video, you cannot unsee it. It's just there for the whole video. And particularly when you add motion, it's pretty distracting. So scaling up your clip just by 1% to 101 is what I do. It means that that thin line is then hidden from view. And because it's such a small amount that we're scaling up the clip, we haven't lost any discernible amount of quality. Okay, so once I've added my sharpening, the next thing I wanna do, I wanna make sure I'm still selected on my clip, which I am down here below. And I'll come up to the window menu option, come down to Lumetri color and select that. Now, if I'd messed up the white balance on my camera during the shooting process, then at this point, I'd need to come up to this basic correction tab uh, within this Lumetri color window. And I'd play around with the white balance settings a fair bit to make sure that uh, it looked a bit more natural as it was when I was actually there, how I saw it with my eyes. Um, so I'd play around with that until I got the image that I was satisfied with. But for me, when I shoot outdoors, I actually shoot with a neutral density filter on, which means I can shoot with that wide open aperture but whilst also shooting at that 1 50th of a second shutter speed so it looks as cinematic as possible. The thing with that though, is that my neutral density filter, which isn't the most expensive one you can get, even the most expensive ones you can get still sometimes do this, but it adds a slight color shift. And for me, the neutral density filter that I use adds a green tint to my footage. So. I come to this white balance portion of the basic correction tab and I'll just bring the tint slider up towards the purple side uh, just to remove some of that green tint. So I generally start at about 20. If that's a little bit too heavy for me, I'll bring it down. Give or take about 15, somewhere between 10 and 15 is generally the, uh, the amount that I need to bring my purple tint uh, into the image. So it just looks a little more natural, a little more lifelike when I was actually there and it just removes that green tint. Okay, so everything else looks pretty good within the image to me though. So from here we move over to the creative tab and this is where you can have a little bit more fun with your footage. This is where you see some of the crazier looks coming out. Uh, and we have a few different controls here, but the first thing we're gonna look at is this look drop down menu. And you can see we get this long list of different looks. Some come pre-installed with Adobe Premiere Pro. In fact, most of them do. Uh, and I've also gone and purchased some other ones as well. But for me, I actually use a lot of the 
inbuilt ones within Premiere Pro. So I'm just gonna click through a few here and you can see what they do. Some have that real contrasty image, some have a bit more of a flatter image, and really it's, I recommend going through each and every single one to find one that suits uh, the image that you're going for. For me though, the one that I use, I use this inbuilt one within Premiere Pro, it's called SL Blue Steel. So I'm gonna click on that. The reason why I like this one so much is because it kind of goes in line with that Hollywood blockbuster teal and orange color palette that you see so often. And I'm often trying to get my footage looking as Hollywood and cinematic as possible. So uh, that's why I go with that one. Like I said, I don't use it out of the box as is. So there's some settings we're gonna play around with here. The first one is this intensity slider. Now, one recommended step is to bring it all the way down to zero, which means it's not affecting your footage whatsoever. And then just slowly click up and just have a look and see at what level do you think, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. For me though, I actually generally work between 70 and 80 in terms of the intensity slider. Some people will limit themselves to no more than 50. Some people really like to dial it in, go up to something like 150 and it gives it a really sort of surreal look. But for me, I found that with SL Blue still and the way that I shoot my footage, somewhere between 70 and 80 is the look that I'm going for. So these next steps are gonna depend on if you're someone who likes a faded film look or someone who likes more of a contrasty look. Just keep that in mind as we work through these next steps because depending on what you are, you might need to just adjust what you do. But this is my workflow and I tend to like a bit more of a faded film look. I think it uh, makes it look like your footage was shot on a camera with a greater dynamic range, which are generally cinema cameras. So I, I tend to dial in a bit more of a faded film look. So just, just play with these settings depending on what you like. So under the adjustments uh, menu here, we've got this faded film slider, funnily enough, and I always like to give mine a starting point of about 20. And if I crank this all the way up to about 65, I'm just gonna show you what this does on a more intense, uh, scale and as you can see it's sort of flattening out those shadow areas of your footage which like i said it gives the impression even though it's not true that you shot your footage on a camera with a greater dynamic range um, again 20 is generally where i set mine at give or take and i'll just alter that depending on the framing of the footage and whatnot. But that's pretty much all I do with the creative tab. I have my intensity to about between 70 and 80. I bring my faded film slider up to about 20 and I've got my SL Blue still look dialed in. But now I come back to my basic correction tab and this is where I really hone that look and make sure it looks as, as good as possible, okay? The first thing, I'm gonna come back to the faded film look in a moment, um, but the first thing I wanna do is address the issue of my hand looking like uh, I've been living in the snow for six months and I've come down with frostbite. Um, so I'm gonna try and get some blood back into my hand. And for me, when I'm looking at my footage, the priority is getting the skin tones accurate. And for, for the most part, that is how you should work as well. Uh, if I don't have something that's a body part or, or skin related in my image, then you can sort of go wild with it because there's nothing to sort of make that, uh, normalize that to the audience. Uh, but if you've got skin in there and it's looking off, you need to address that. So for me, to fix this issue, I'm gonna to come to my temperature slider under my white balance drop down portion of the basic correction. And I'm just gonna start bringing in some of that orange uh, temperature that we need to, to make my hand look like it's got blood still flowing. So I'm gonna start at about 23 because I know it's gonna need a little bit of work here. Not bad, but not all the way there. I'm gonna really crank this up to about 40. And that's looking a lot more lifelike. You could even crank this right up the way to 50. I probably wouldn't go much more than 50. Uh, but my hand, the skin tones are looking a lot more natural, okay? I am a pale guy as it is, uh, but yeah, this is looking more natural. Now, you can see that the background has, uh, obviously now is very orange and, and sort of saturated in that way. It's very vibrant. I actually like that look. And when I shot it, I did shoot it in the afternoon sun. And my intention was it, was for it to look like it was shot during golden hour. Uh, but if you wanted to go in and really uh, hone your look, then you could actually use what we call selective or secondary color correction or color grading. And the way that you do that is you're gonna grab your mask tool and you will draw around the selection that you don't want to be impacted. So I'll just show you a really quick example here. I'm not gonna, I never use it myself because I don't need it. But if you're doing short film work, you may need this a little bit more. And what I'm gonna do is actually just draw a really quick, horrendous mask around my hand. It's gonna look bad. Just trust me on this one. I'm just gonna show you how it works. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my mask feather up to about 60, type that in. And uh, what that does is it basically, I've now selected the Lumetri color effect to only impact that mask portion that I've just selected, okay? And what I would do is I would actually duplicate this Lumetri color effect, copy and paste that, and then I will invert the mask on the second duplicated Lumetri color effect. And what you'll see is now the image looks as it did before. But what I can do now is come under my basic correction and bring that color temperature back down to about 20 where it wasn't so intense. And once that sort of dials in, you can see, even though that was a horrendous mask that I drew, we've now got a more natural looking hand and a more natural looking background. Like I said, I don't use this, uh, so it's not part of my workflow. I just wanted to show you that that is an option if that's something that you really need to fix. So for me, I don't need that mask. I'm gonna delete that and we're gonna we're gonna move on. So my image is looking pretty close to the final product, but I wanna dial in, like I said before, I wanna finish off that faded film look that I really like. And so the way that I do this is by playing with my shadows and my blacks levels. And so uh, I generally set these at about 20 each. And I find that using the three different sliders, so the shadows, the blacks, and the faded film look under the creative tab, uh, they help to dial in that faded film look a little more naturally than if you'd had to just use one slider. Uh, and so I generally set each at about 20, and that gives it the look that I'm going for. And what I wanna do now is actually show you, I'm gonna get out of that, I'm gonna turn off my Lumetri color effect, and you can see now the before footage and the after footage. And you can see it's, it's a fairly stark contrast and uh, the thing is the footage beforehand doesn't look bad by any means and that's the key for this is that your footage needs to look good already for the color grading uh, process to sort of work to the full effect okay so once I've got my look really dialed in and I'm happy with how that clip looks uh, if I've got some other shots that were shot in the same location with the same lighting which I do here then what I can do is I can copy uh, right click that clip copy it and I'm going to paste this across just that scene of shots. Now I've got some other clips that were shot in some other locations with some different lighting, so I'm gonna be a bit more intentional than I am here. But I'm gonna come up to edit for these clips and paste attributes, and you can see it's automatically checked the sharpen effect, the Lumetri color, and make sure you also check the motion attribute because it gives it that 101 scaling, which gets rid of that sharpening thin line issue. I'm gonna hit okay. And what I do from here is just make sure that that matches, which it does, I'm happy with how that looks. And then what I can do is I can actually come to the other locations that I shot in throughout this project. And what I'll do is I'll start by still pacing the attributes, but I won't do it across the whole scene yet because I wanna make sure that I get the look right before I put it in to all the other clips. So I'm gonna come up to window first, Lumetri color. Uh, it's a bit too orange now because my hand was a bit more in the sunlight for this shot. So I'm gonna bring that temperature slider right the way back down to about 20. That looks good. And then I'll copy and paste that to the rest of the clips. And then I'll keep dialing that look in and adjusting it depending on where I shot each piece of footage. So that is my color grading process. Like I said, it's not necessarily gonna work for everyone, but it works for me and that is what matters. Lumetri Color is actually a really powerful tool that comes pre-installed with Adobe Premiere Pro. And for that reason, I think it has a little bit of a creative edge over other editing platforms. Now, I know you can install custom plugins and so forth. You can get very similar looks with other editing programs, but Lumetri Color comes pre-installed for free. The look I use is pre-installed. It's also free. So my whole color grading process does not cost a penny. But anyway, that is it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. I know a lot of you have been asking how I go about color grading, so I know it at least addresses that question for you guys. If you have any thoughts on this workflow or any questions regarding it, then please put them down in the comments section below. But that's it from me. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you later.